to my channel, I just want to start off by saying a massive thank you to everyone who entered my giveaway and left me a question on last week's video. In today's video, I'm going to announce the winner and I'm also going to answer all the questions you had about tips and advice for people wanting to start out in YouTube and on Instagram, how I deal with online hate, some holy grail products and a bunch of other random stuff about me. So if you're interested in that, just keep on watching and don't forget to give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments below and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll get right on into it. The first question comes from Sherilyn. She asks who my favorite YouTuber or Instagrammer is. So I don't have a favorite Instagrammer, but I do watch a lot of YouTube and some of my favorites are people like Jacqueline Hill. I really like Mariah Leonard at the moment. She's awesome. Carissa Pukas, Shan XO, all those top guns. Chloe Morello as well, she's hilarious. Sherilyn also asked what my all-time favorite eyeshadows are and hands down, Makeup Geek. Makeup Geek shadows are the best shadows you could ever possibly purchase. I had a question from Jessica who asked if I could be a specific beauty YouTuber for one day, who would it be and why? And I'd have to say Jacqueline Hill. I just love her so much and I'd just like to snoop through her house for 24 hours, to be honest. I want to see all her like beautiful chandeliers and furniture and play with her dogs. So Jacqueline Hill. Oh my girl, Lisa. So Lisa is actually from the same town I'm from. So hey girl, hey. If I could only use one makeup product for the rest of my life, what would it be? And I would have to say mascara, hands down. So I feel like when I don't wear mascara, I look beady eyed. Monique asked, what video am I most proud of on my channel? And I think it would have to be my makeup collection video, just because it's a video that you guys have loved the most. It has the most likes and the most views out of any video on my channel and the most comments and everything and I've had like a lot of really great conversations with complete strangers on that and that is what makes me the most happiest like being able to talk to you guys and like have genuine friendly conversation and I also really like my makeup brushes 101 video I just like the quality of it and how it was filmed and the presentation of everything I just felt like it looked really pretty and I was really happy with it with the aesthetics and also how everything came out. Rachel asked what is my favorite foundation high-end or drugstore? I will show you both. So my favorite drugstore foundation would have to be the Revlon Photo Ready Foundation. It is a, such a beautiful formula and is very full coverage and it looks incredible on film and also in photos. So I have repurchased this probably like a dozen times. It is my go-to foundation usually for everyday wear as well. And then my favorite high-end foundation would have to be the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. Even though this is relatively new in my collection, it is actually quite similar to the Revlon Photo Ready. However, I feel like it sticks to my skin more and doesn't move on the face as much. They both have incredibly similar finishes. So they're both a demi-matte finish, which means they're not incredibly mattifying like the Fit Me Matte and Poreless by Maybelline but they're not a dewy finish foundation. Megan asks what my skincare routine is. I have all intentions of actually eventually filming a full in-depth skincare routine video. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you let me know in the comments section and I'll be sure to get it filmed sooner rather than later for you guys. But my favorite products are currently the Real You skincare range. So I use their cleanser. This is the control face gel and I also use their moisturizer. It's just a really great brand if you have sensitive skin. So I personally get really irritated skin quite easily and this is just cleans my face leaves it moisturized and healthy without that irritation and then I had a question from Rachel asking what makeup fad do I regret most um it's kind of hard because like I don't really look back at pictures of myself and think I ever had any major makeup faux pas Probably the only thing is, like back when I was 18, we used to buy like massive disc bronzers, like huge bronzers, and we'd get massive, big, fluffy brushes. And I just used to like bronze my entire face. So like not just the cheekbones and, you know, contouring and all that sort of stuff. I used just to do my entire face. And I bronze my chest and I bronze my shoulders and everything. I don't regret it as such, but I just used to, yeah, literally swirl my brush in bronzer and I like, put it everywhere everywhere <laughs> and then Hayley asked what do I think is like the most classic look that anyone could essentially pull off and I think hands down just a standard brown soft or dramatic smoky eye so because you have two different options with brown tones you've got cool tone and warm tone so without fail no matter what your eye color is no matter what your skin color is if you go with either a cool tone or a warm tone a brown smoky eye or brown soft makeup look it's gonna look beautiful and it is my go-to look if I don't know what to do that is exactly what I do. I just stick with neutral brown shades and it always looks beautiful without fail. 
So scrolling through all the comments, there are a bunch of different questions about was it hard starting out on YouTube and advice for people interested in starting a beauty Instagram and also YouTube channels. So I'm going to give you some Hannah 101's my personal experience advice for you guys. <laughs> so the first thing, if you're looking to start on Instagram or YouTube, don't be afraid, just simply start. So you don't have to worry about buying a flashy camera and flashy equipment. Just simply give it a shot and see if you actually enjoy the process because it is a very time consuming hobby and I feel like you really do have to have a true passion for it, for it to be enjoyable. Now that you've already started YouTube and you're getting into it and you decide you really enjoy it and you wanna keep pursuing it, my next tip is to save up some money and buy yourself some good quality equipment, so that being a camera and lighting. I personally have a Canon 70D, which is a very pricey camera. There are some cheap options like the Canon 60D, which is what I originally started off with. So certainly look at investing in some better equipment so you can produce a better quality video. My biggest tip for new YouTubers is do not buy buy into the sub for sub bullshit. In the long run, it is honestly not gonna benefit you even slightly. There are so many other things you could be spending your time in that are gonna help you develop your content and grow your audience much quicker than spamming people with sub for sub comments. What you need to be focusing your energy on is sharing your content on your social media platforms. So whenever I upload a YouTube video, I always post a picture to do with that YouTube video or mini clips from that YouTube video on my Instagram, my Tumblr, and my Twitter, and I get a whole nother audience from there to come over to my channel and watch my videos. And my next tip is try and build actual genuine relationships. So find people who you're on the same sort of level with and comment genuine feedback on their videos and actually take the time to watch their videos. And if you like them, try and build a friendship. In the long run, this could mean things like collaborations and also getting genuine support back on your channel rather than this like the sub for sub spam. So my next tip is to film popular content videos. So don't sell out from what you personally want to do and definitely make sure whatever you're filming is still relevant to the content that's on your channel, but make sure it is popular content. So I find dedicated product specific review videos and things like that are really popular and also tag videos. So if someone creates a tag and you see a lot of big YouTubers doing that tag or even medium size and small size YouTubers, you should definitely do that tag too if it is relevant to your content and the likelihood of people getting it suggested in their side column and also searching for it is a lot higher than if you did some random topic video. So they are my most important tips for any of you guys looking to start out on YouTube or Instagram. If you have any other questions regarding that topic, just leave them in the comments section and I'll be sure to get back to you down there. The next question really touched my heart and it came from Brooke. She asked, given you are a relatively new YouTuber and the sad world we live in with internet trolls, how do you cope with any negativity? I saw a response you left when someone questioned your eyes. Your response was so diplomatic and amazing. I'd love to follow my heart with beauty and do something like this, but I don't have the confidence and similarly suffer chronic illness. So self-confidence is zero. Any tips for someone wanting to follow her dreams or even just confidence boosters? So what Brooke is referring to is a comment that was left on one of my videos recently that went along the lines of, get that shit off your face, you have red eyes. Little does that ignorant idiot know that I have red eyes because I have a genetic eye disease, not because of what's on my face. So the majority of negative comments I personally get are actually on Instagram and it's usually when I get reposted by really big accounts and it's not just me, it happens to everyone, it doesn't matter who you are, if you get reposted by a big account without fail, you're going to get half nice comments, half negative comments. And the most common comment I get is still ugly though. And I'm just like, well, you're the shallow one when we think about it because I'm not posting content on any social media because I think I'm some God-given gift to the earth of beauty. I'm posting it because I like makeup. I like talking to people that like hearing about makeup. I want to share products I love and I'm here to show you how to use those products. It's not a beauty competition. I'm not here because I think I'm some aesthetically blessed human being. I'm here because I'm just sharing about things I enjoy talking about. And your point commenting that I'm ugly is what? Like what relevance does that have to anything? It has no relevance. Negative comments in general do not affect my self-worth even slightly. They're just an annoyance. Like I can't pretend like people don't give me the shits because they do, but they don't make me feel bad about myself. Like I don't sit in the mirror then after that comment and be like, I wish my eyes weren't bloodshot because I can't change that. 
like my eyes are my eyes and unfortunately I was born with a condition that means they are like permanently bloodshot. Sometimes they are worse than other days. There's nothing I can do about it. So I'm not going to beat myself up over it because someone made an ignorant stupid comment and I guaranteed you when I corrected them they probably felt like an absolute fucking idiot. So I think because I'm much older now, I'm 26, I've had time to really like come into my own. If I was 18 and had got those sort of comments, I probably would have cried myself to sleep. But like I'm a grown woman now, 26 years old. I've looked at my face every day for the last 26 years of my life and it is my face. I don't like have any biffs with my face. So all the advice I can really give is be confident in yourself. You are you for a reason. We are all made in different shapes and sizes for a reason. Like how boring would the world be if we were all the same? Because it would be. We're meant to be different. And don't beat yourself up if someone wants to pick you apart for not being like them or not being their idea of perfection because there's really no such thing as perfection. There isn't one set standard of perfection and there never will be and people that find it necessary to try to pick you apart just block and delete them or if you like me and sometimes you like being a bit sassy and telling them where to stick it then tell them where to stick it because sometimes I like doing that. So someone asked if I have any pets and I do. I have two dogs, Lily and Mia. Lily is a Maltese Shih Tzu and Mia is Australian Terrier Cross Jack Russell Cross Chihuahua. So I always Snapchat them so if you want to see a little sneak peek into my personal life a little bit more and also my puppies and make sure you follow me on Snapchat. And I also had a question about what I actually do for a full-time job. So I work for my family and they own a funeral home. So I just work in the office there. I don't do any mortuary work or anything like that. I'm just purely in the office, but they've owned it since I was like six or seven years old and they actually live on the premises. So I get to go to mum and dad's house every day for work, which is pretty awesome. And I also had a couple of questions about my hair. Someone asked if I had gray or silver hair, but it's not. I was actually talking to my hairdresser, Kayla, who's one of my best friends ever, and she was saying she would describe my hair more as like a sandy blonde. The only time it is ever slightly kind of grey or ashy based is after I've toned it at home, and I use the Fudge Purple Shampoo, so it's really strong, so it does really tone it up. So usually after the first wash, it is still a bit sort of ashy, silvery, and by the second wash, it's just back to like a normal vibrant sort of sandy blonde colour. And I also have some questions about my fingernails. So I do naturally have a really, really long fingernails. Um, they're not usually quite this long. However, I have been kind of growing them. So all I do for them, like nail care wise, is I just literally paint them and file them. I don't do anything else at all. I just have really good natural nails. So guys, that is all the questions I'm gonna answer in today's Q&A. And now it's time to announce the actual winner of the giveaway. A massive congratulations to Brooke Russ. You are the lucky winner today. I'm going to be messaging you directly through YouTube to grab all your shipping details and everything. So keep your eye out for that. Don't be sad if you didn't win this giveaway. There's gonna be plenty more. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because my next one will definitely be there when I hit 10K and I'll do another one when I hit 10k here on YouTube. So thanks so much again guys for watching and I'll be talking to you really soon. Bye! I just wanna watch you.